Hello YouTube, this is part three of implementing the rules of chess. So last time we left off, we're in the board class and we left off going through the is legal move function and we got through all the castling stuff and we got through this line of code and we got to here. So I've already talked about the get possible moves function and uh, had maybe two whole videos devoted to it. So now we get to determining whether or not a move is legal. So as I said in the last video, if it's a knight, uh, we don't have to worry about jumping over pieces. So you would think knights would be harder because, ooh, they can jump over pieces. But in fact, it's really the opposite. It was really difficult making it such that a bishop can't just jump over pieces and making the possible moves stop once it ran into a piece. The line doesn't go forever. Anyway, so knights I did first. If it's a knight, is what this says. If, uh, basically, the most simple line, the most simple code of all of them. If the move we're thinking about Okay, so for each coordinate in the possible destination set, we're going to ask this. If that coordinate is the same as the move we're trying to make, return true. So basically, if it's in the possible moves, it's a legal move for knights. Now this is ignoring the rules of check and pins. That we'll get to later. So that's the um, that's the idea. If it's a legal move, I mean, if it's in the possible moves, it's gonna be legal. So now for bishops. Um, so we have this function introduced, and let me talk about. So for if it's a bishop, for each coordinate in the possible destinations. If there's a match. So what we're saying is if we're trying to make a move that's in the possibles, so we, we check all the possibles, we say, oh, so the move they're trying to make is one of the possibles, let's check it out. And what we do then is we get a set of coordinates that I named tweeners, and we get that from get all points between points diagonal start destination. So I'll go ahead and run the program so you can see what the heck this method is doing. Basically, if a player is trying to, so they've got a bishop, and they're trying to move it to here, well, I need to know what's in between there to know whether or not the move is legal. So I run this function, and it returns, so if they had a bishop here and were trying to move it to this tile right here, this function would return me these three squares. And then I have to check whether or not they are empty. So let's go ahead and check out get all points between points diagonal. I think it's a bit of a mess, a bit of a mess, but that's okay. Here's the vertical, horizontal, get all points between points diagonal. Okay. Wow. <laughs> this was a this was messy. So we got an empty result set. First we determine the slope orientation. So, wow, I don't even understand this. And I wrote it. If A, we have two coordinates, A and B. So if A dot X is greater than B dot X. So let's say we have A and B. If A dot X is greater than B dot X, which in, in this instance it's less, and a dot y is greater than b dot y. So okay, so it's saying if we're moving from left to right, and we're moving from top down, then it's a negative slope. See, so this says if it's going left to right and from the top down, then it's a negative slope. Pause slope equals false. If we're moving left to right, but we're moving bottom up, then positive slope is true. So if you can imagine, we're moving left to right, but down and up. So maybe from here to here. In fact, I'll go ahead and show. So maybe from here to there. That would be 
a positive slope and this would be a negative slope. The reason I need to know this is because I'm, I need to know which in between points to check. Anyway, yeah, I'm getting this error when I check the king, and it's only when I check him on a diagonal, and I thought it was just with pawns, and now I'm getting it here, so I'm going to have to fix that. See, we get this nasty... I have to scroll all the way back up to see the beginning of the exception. Uh, forget it. I'll debug it later. Okay, so and here we have if a dot x is less than b dot x. So if we're moving right to left, which would be the situation that I was first talking about when we have the bishop in its starting position and we try to move it over. So when we try a bishop here to here. So a is less than b, so if if we're moving a dot y is greater than b dot y, so that means if we're moving a is greater than a is greater than b. I forget. This says the opposite of what the first one did. So see, actually it says the same because this is the opposite. Basically we're determining what's whether we're moving if you imagine an equation for a line, we're determining whether the slope is positive or negative. And it works. That's all you need to know. So, yeah, and then I ended up... This is such a messy function. Smaller x is the smaller of the two, and smaller y is the smaller of the two y's. Okay, larger x is the larger of the two x's. And I apparently, apparently I didn't end up using the variable larger y. So the difference is going to be the larger minus the smaller. And um, the difference is going to, difference in x is going to be the same as difference in y. If you imagine this, because the slope is either positive 1 or negative 1, which means the difference in x and difference in y are always going to be the same. See, they both change by 1 They if we're moving this bishop here. So if we're moving this bishop, they both change by 1, they both change by 2, they both change by 3 both by 4 and so on. It's always a, a perfectly even line. So with that in mind, if it's not a positive slope, okay, for int n equals 1, n is less than difference, n plus plus. So the difference we're using to determine how many tweeners there are. So let's say the difference is 4. We're going to run this four times, or maybe three times. Um, new x equals smaller y plus n. This is some crazy stuff, but it works. It took a while to write. It's kind of embarrassing that I don't understand my own code. Okay, so if it's a negative slope, we run this a number of times. So new y, if it's a negative slope, we're adding points to the set. We're adding we're adding this point, that point, and that point to the set. And then we keep going up this way too. Hmm. So if it's a positive slope, and keep in mind the really confusing part is that the coordinate system starts here. So up and down are kind of reversed from what you would normally think about in a math class. So if it's a positive slope, meaning angled this way, if you can see the cursor, we're going to add some values to the result set. Okay, I'm starting to understand. We just add all these new points. We increment the y value by 1. Oh, now that should be subtracted. The more I look at it, the more confused I get. I wrote, wow, how do I not even understand? It? Anyway, this function returns all the points between two points on a given diagonal. So it assumes that the points you pass into it are diagonally related. If they're not, I have no idea what it returns. 
So, hopefully I can explain the get all points between points vertical. That makes more sense. So you return, you give it two points on the same column, and it says how many, it gives you all the points between it, between the two. So this function is useful for rooks and queens. So if, okay, if b.x is not equal to a.x, so if the points given aren't even on the same column, just return an empty set because there are no points between those points vertically. So x equals b dot x, just making things simpler, I guess. Larger equals the larger of the two y values. Smaller equals the smaller of the two y values. Difference equals larger minus smaller. Okay, so we have a number called difference that's going to be, let's, example time. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so here the difference would be, it's going to be the larger, so it would be 5 minus 3. The difference is going to be 2. So assuming a difference value of 2, so int y equals 1, as long as y is less than 2, keep going. So it's only going to run this one time. And we know because that there's only going to be one point between these two points. This is the move I'm looking at, by the way. If someone was moving from, well, if someone was moving from here to there, you can imagine that move. So, for each that, for every difference, we'll run this as many times as we still have a point in between. It says, it new y equals smaller plus y. So we're going to take the smaller y value and add one to it. So that would return us this point. If new y is still smaller and new oh so if new y is still greater than smaller and less than the larger. So this basically checks if we're still within the bounds of you know the between points which might not be necessary check but it doesn't hurt. Add the new point. So all this does is let's say we're moving the rook from here to here. So it takes the larger y value, which is going to be 6, and the smaller, which is 3, subtracts them. So we have a difference of 3. It's going to run, it's going to check this three times. The first time it's going to say, okay, so add 1 to the y value, and if we're still between the bounds, add that point to the set. Add 1 to the y value, if we're still between, add that to the set. Great. Here again, we add 1 to the y value, if we're still between, add 1 to the set. Here again, add 1 to the y value if we're still between. And that one won't, that one would not be between because it's not going to be less than larger. New y there is going to be equal to larger. So it's, it's not going to return this point as in between. It's only going to return these two as in between. Okay, and the, uh, the horizontal method is the same but reversed. I mean, just for horizontal. So, let's get away from these functions as soon as we can. Okay, so get all points between points. For each of those, if, if they are empty, return false. If they're not empty, perfect, okay. So, get all the points between the points. So it will get these two, and if either of them are not empty, say no, it's not a legal move. Simple enough. If we never return false, then we're only left with the fact that they were all empty, so we'll return true. If the move we're trying to make wasn't even in the possible destinations, we return false right away and move on. So if it's a rook, set of coordinate tweeners, new hash set coordinate. So we have an empty set, it's, it's the same thing as last time. Get all points between points horizontal, get all points between points vertical. So we have all of these between points. And if any of them are empty, are not empty, we return false, the move isn't legal. So when this rook, when I click on this rook, it, it gets all of these it marks this as legal and this is legal. Well, actually, it marks this move on the pawn as legal because these slots are empty. 
see if, if there was something between it. Uh, White's turn. See, there's pieces here. So this move isn't legal. Knight all the way down to, moving the rook all the way down to this knight because there's a piece in between. This one isn't legal because there's a piece in between. Knights have don't have this problem. I can just let them move wherever they want. That's why knights are easier. There's empty falls. Okay, so for a pawn, the start type is a pawn. So non-capturing moves first. If we're moving along the same column, meaning it's a non-capture move, because every time a pawn captures, it changes columns. So if we're moving along the same column and our destination is empty, return true. Remember, we don't have to worry about moving one space or two. That was all dealt with in the get possible moves function. So all we have to do is say, is it empty? If it is, then it's legal. So for capturing moves, if the absolute value of the start.x minus des.x equals 1, all this means, yeah, translation, if we're moving one rank over, one file over, huh? right? File, yeah. If we're moving one file over, basically, if the absolute value of the difference between the start and the destination is 1, so we're, we're changing columns. And the destination is not empty, return true. So if it's a capture move, basically is what this is really saying. If we're trying to make a capture move and there is a piece to be captured, return true. Otherwise, return false. Other, other, otherwise, return false. So again, if the move we're considering isn't even in possibles, we'll return false. If it's a queen, we do the same thing that we did for rooks and bishops together. The horizontal, vertical, and diagonal tweeners Check that none of them are empty, or check that they are empty, and return false if they aren't. Start type, if it's a king, we just move anywhere that's legal, because once again, there's no, we don't have to worry about in-between pieces for kings, and we don't have to worry about for pawns, it's not like we have to worry about whether or not it's a certain type of move because again, this does not address check yet. So for the king, it's a, it looks the exact same as the code for the knight. Uh, that's it for the is legal move. Next time, we're going to get to the is truly legal move function, which um, here it is. It's truly legal move, which is a terrible name for a function, but. You know, I just haven't bothered renaming yet. Basically, what this is asking is if it's impossible moves and it's also passes the is legal move test and it also does not put in your own team in check, then it's a legal move. It's a truly legal move. So it's a truly legal move if it is possible, is legal, barring check, and then is legal, considering check. So it's actually a pretty short function. The long one is going to be, does move put team in check? Move team, whether or not to update the little notice window. That's a Boolean value. So I'll get to that function in the next episode. Until then, uh, I don't know. Live, yeah. <laughs>